everyone. Uh, I have a project where I need to deconstruct a waffle maker, uh, take it apart, uh, figure out the main parts, the things that make it a waffle maker. Uh, so I'm going to take this apart, uh, photograph all the pieces to it, and I figured you might want to watch it and see what's on the inside of a waffle maker and what makes it work. Now I've already had to take this one apart within the last month or two because I tried to make waffles on my own for the first time and I didn't spray Pam on it and I also overfilled it which was great uh, and it taught me a lot and just for background information this particular model was my grandmother's uh, she let me take it when I went to school and yeah I, I, I overfilled it so any sort of mess on here is not due to her, it was me. It was totally me. And it was a real pain to take apart and to clean. But I'm gonna do it again because I need it for this project. And you will get to benefit because you get to see what it looks like on the inside and all the parts. And I get to take it apart. <laughs> so open it up and yeah, it still needs to be cleaned again. And I'm sorry about that. Uh, there are a few screws in here to hold the actual iron in. Okay, so that one's a top screw. It's going over there. I gotta keep track of which screws are where and everything. Uh, and this is a much older model. Um, I'm assuming that this was the one my grandmother used when my mom was a child. So I, there is definitely room for improvement on this design. And it, the handle does get hot when it's going, um, when it's on. And there are no buttons or anything to it that tell you when this thing is done. Okay, so this, that screw, on this particular model, at least, this is the top shell. It's got the little place for the light. Actually, that's not even the light, that's just the screen for the light, a little plastic thing that can pop out. That's lovely. Okay, not doing that. Uh, oh, I guess I will. Uh, this is what the little thing looks like, and you pop that back in. Um, don't want to lose it. Here is the resistor and the little light. I'm assuming that just tells you that it's on. Remember, I've only used it once and I messed that up royally. Uh, and this part, it does come unhinged from here. But the weird thing about it is that because these wires go around and it connects to the underside of the iron, you can't fully separate it and then you'll see. It, it gets kind of confusing. But I'm going to take these screws out under here next. That was... Was I even unscrewing that? I hope I was. Oh, I don't think I was pushing hard enough. Yeah, lefty Lucy. It's going left. Right? I'm not insane, am I? I think I might be insane. Um, uh, we'll take this out first then. Uh, various screwing mechanisms holding mysterious pieces together, right? That's what it does. Okay, so this is the little back plate where you would be able to reach this stuff. Uh, these are the wires from the other side and they clip in to this little place. Uh, and trust me, when I got this all messed up, like you can actually see some of the batter that I couldn't get to. I don't know how that's going to happen. Like what's going to happen the next time I try to use this thing. Uh, so I hope my grandmother doesn't see this and see how badly I messed this thing up. Uh, so that was that. There, I'm not sure what this is. I'll have to look that up. This is a lot dirtier. I shouldn't have done this on a white background. Okay. More bottom screws. Okay. Oh, 
I did unscrew that. Good. There it is. I wasn't insane. Not totally, at least. Okay. So you can see why this was a mess um, to deal with. And how if I were to take these out of their little place, um, it just ends up this being like on a string between the two and there's no way of getting it out um, unless I undid the wiring in here, which I don't want to do. Uh, okay, so each piece has a heating element on it. Um, it looks like the heat goes through here some way and goes over there and that connects to this which is the power source so maybe this is some sort of special energy diverter thing I'm not sure I need to look this up but this is what it looks like when you take it apart uh, not too many pieces on it so it's not too complicated pretty straightforward uh, let's see if I can fit this thing back together within the time limit that YouTube imposes on me. Um, so I'm going to stuff this part with this little fabric thing cover on it over into here. Uh, let's see, those were silver screws, right? Um, there we go. A yeah, little box, about that big. Sorry, I need to like figure out what, yeah, this is, this is going to be an interesting one because the next part of the assignment, which I wasn't, I didn't need to take something apart for it. But I needed to come up with like little box sizes of what makes my product, in this case the waffle maker, what it is. Uh, so basically I have the two parts of the mold, maybe some feet, and these little tiny things of electronics and the heating element problem is, is that it doesn't like necessarily could change shape so easily. Um, so I'm going to have a difficult time figuring that part out. But that's okay because that's what makes this a project, right? Yeah. Let's pretend to be excited. I'll be more excited once I get into being able to figure out other parts, not just that particular. Is that in all the way? I can't tell. Okay, well, I'm gonna, s nope, not at all. Not at all, there we go. Gotta hold the iron into it. And I'm gonna tell you, like the first time I took this apart, it was very difficult for me because I had no idea what to expect. Come on, screw, am I, is it not going into the right thing? I'm guessing it's not going into the right thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna screw this part back in then first. Maybe that'll make it better, easier at least. Oh wait, no, nope, nope. Gotta make sure this piece is in then. There we go. Okay, maybe now I can get that other screw in. And it'll line up properly. It was that one, right? It's the only silver one left. Yeah. Go. 
Okay, and this is a difficult part, making sure that these little wires in there stay within here. Uh, because this piece that's attached to this part of the mold uh, helps protect them. And when I overfilled it, that's how it got into the little crevice of everything, was it went through that little hole. But in general, you don't want those wires sticking out and flying around it over here, because then you never know what kind of wire damage you're going to cause yourself. But yeah, I mean, obviously if you're under 18, get parental permission to do this. Um, and even if you're over 18, you should still be careful. Uh, and of course, unplug the dang thing before doing anything. Don't do this while it's plugged in. Especially a model like this where it doesn't actually have an on-off switch. Because um, this one, you just plug in and it just starts heating up. There is no safety feature because this is an old model. Um, I don't know. Maybe there isn't a regulation for that now. I mean, there's obviously stuff for easy bake ovens, but that's also intended for little, little youngins. Uh... But yeah, there's really not much to this. Um, I mean, it's not like you'd be able to just make one yourself. But it's a simple machine. Uh, and it needs to be cleaned still. So I apologize for that again. But I hope you learned something. I hope you found this to be fun. Uh, at least kind of fun. Uh, but please hit subscribe. And like and all that good stuff. And I hope to see you again. Well, not see you. I hope I hope that you see me again, uh, specifically on YouTube. Uh, and I have other videos. Maybe I'll come out with more videos on undoing things. Does that line up? Yeah, that lines up. Um, oh, one good feature is it does have this little tiny little rim around it that I'm guessing is for overfills, but it could not handle the awesomeness of my overfill. But I hope you have a fantastic night. Uh, take care. Thanks for watching. Bye.